reticles. What are they? And why are they important to Intel? Before you learn the proper procedure for handling reticles and transporting them from one place to another in the fab, you need to understand what the reticle's role is in the 854 process, as well as in subsequent processes. Each reticle contains an individual pattern layer, which is transferred to each wafer in Nikon steppers, or SVG links. Each reticle is protected by a nitrocellulose membrane called the pellicle. Most of the damage that occurs to reticles affects the pellicle and can result in stopping a whole product line until that reticle is repaired or replaced. Repairing reticles alone costs Intel two to three million dollars annually. And that doesn't even account for the cost of actually replacing an irreparable reticle or the lost revenue resulting from a stopped product line. A stopped product line can cost us more than a million dollars a day. So you can see that reducing expensive repairs has a direct impact on Intel's profitability, which in turn affects our bonuses. So just what can we do to help minimize the often unintentional damage occurring to reticles and keep our productivity levels high? Let's look at what causes these reticle damages and decide what we can do to eliminate them. As you know, particles are the single biggest kill factor to our dye. This is also true of our reticles. Just as particles fall from the lot boxes onto wafers, they can also fall from reticle boxes onto the reticles themselves. While some of these particles can be removed by using an N2 pressure gun, some may become embedded in the pellicle. When this happens, the image of the particle will be transferred to the wafer during processing in the Nikon steppers or SVG links. This action may render the dye non-functional. Because each layer image has only one reticle in some cases, this can affect a whole product line until it is detected. Damage can also occur when the cassette is placed roughly into the Nikon library. This can force the reticle to shift from its post and slide out of the cassette or cause the cassette to shed particles. Now that we know what reticles are and how they can be damaged by contamination, let's look at some factors that can generate particles on our reticle. Most damage occurs when handling or temporarily setting reticle boxes down. Although malfunctioning equipment can also contribute to particle generation. Unless you have learned how to properly handle reticles, it's easy to do it the wrong way. Like this obviously uninformed MT who's demonstrating the wrong way to handle reticles. Hmm. This MT needs some watching. There might be other behavior that should be corrected. Let's show him how the reticle box should be handled. First, when carrying reticle boxes or temporarily setting them down in the fab, do not stack them. Placing reticle boxes in stacks puts pressure on the lower box, which dislodges particles. These particles can then find their way onto the pellicle or reticle. When carrying reticle cassettes, do not carry more than one at a time and do not carry them at your side. This also dislodges particles and leads to double trouble, reticle and the pellicle damage. The proper way to carry reticle boxes is to hold the tan Nikon cassette level in front of you with both hands the flap should be facing away from the person holding the cassette. Be certain to place three fingers on the bottom of the cassette, your index finger along the front flap, and your thumb on the side. And don't tap your fingers on the cassette or place your fingers on the clear cassette lid while waiting for a piece of equipment to finish its cycle. Tapping the box will definitely dislodge particles. Proper handling of the black SVG cassette is even more critical because it's carried almost vertically. 
The SVG cassette must be carried in such a manner that the part number faces your left side. Your fingers do not touch the release latches. And the top edge is tilted slightly to your right. Keep your fingers away from the front flap of the SVG cassette or the reticle may become dislodged. When loading the cassette into the Nikon, gently place it into position. This will eliminate the chance of the reticle shifting forward and sliding part way out of the cassette. Reticle boxes must not be dragged across any surface. Simply pick them up one at a time. The dragging action will not only create particles, it also generates electrostatic discharge, or ESD. ESD must be avoided at all costs because it can actually blow the pattern from the reticle. Simply placing a reticle box next to an ESD source such as pens, paper, or clipboard can cause major reticle damage. To reduce the possibility of ESD damage, never place a reticle box on any surface other than in dedicated reticle holding areas. Also, always transfer reticles directly from the machine to the stocker and vice versa. This eliminates potential ESD damage. Another way to prevent particle damage is to never open a reticle cassette. This must only be done by a properly certified QCO technician and only then in the QCO room under proper conditions. If the reticle box does need to be opened, the QCO technician will use certain tools to touch the reticle, thus eliminating the possibility of transferring particles to the reticle. So there you have it. You now know how to properly handle reticle boxes in the fab. Actually, it's just a matter of common sense and following certain procedures, isn't it? Let's be sure we understand what we've just seen. Remember, don't stack reticle boxes. Place or carry only one at a time. Be sure not to tap on the cassette while holding it. Use both hands and carry the reticle cassette level with three fingers on the bottom, the index finger on the front flap, and the thumb along the side. Don't touch the front flap of the SVG cassette. Hold the SVG cassette so that the part number is to the left side and the top edge is tilted slightly to the right. Never drag a cassette across a surface. Simply pick it up one at a time. Be sure to load the cassette gently into the Nikon library to avoid shifting of the reticle. To reduce ESD damage, don't place a reticle cassette near objects that may retain a charge. And never place a reticle box on any surface other than a properly designated area in the QCO reticle room. Finally, don't attempt to open a reticle box for any reason. Call in a certified QCO technician if it becomes necessary to open a reticle box or to remove a cassette from a down stepper. A reticle is run on at least 250 wafers between inspections, which means that damage caused by improper handling could affect as many as 250 wafers. Carrying a reticle is like carrying 250 wafers in your hands. The care you take in handling reticles should be even that much greater than the care you take when handling lock boxes. If you have questions about proper reticle handling, speak to a certified reticle inspector or consult the reticle handling spec for your fab. By taking a little extra time and effort, we can reduce downtime and lower costs together. In this way, we will continue to produce high quality product and make Intel a successful and profitable company. And you are an important element in making this happen.